When it comes to formal education, surge or transient pressure waves is still very much a specialized topic. Ironically, transient pressure waves exist in all fluid piping systems. They behave much like a team of covert ninjas moving so fast and often so strongly, it's hard to know they are there until something breaks. When there is a failure, it is often assumed there is a high pressure problem when in fact low pressure transients are quite commonly the root cause. This is important because appropriately mitigating surge pressure issues means tackling the problem at the source. This paper and presentation will use real life and computer modeling examples to reveal how common fluid piping system events can induce low pressure transient waves. These events are ultimately just as destructive as high pressure ninja counterparts. Let's start with a little daydream. Imagine you're at a concert. You hear the music loud and clear. Perhaps you're daring enough to even crowd surf. Now, before your bubble has burst and you realize you are listening to an engineering webinar through a virtual conference due to a pandemic, consider the cool factor of this. And that is, transient pressure waves travel through liquid-filled pipes much like sound waves travel through the air, which actually resembles a crowd surfer at a concert. This type of wave is a compression type wave, or more technically known as a longitudinal wave. In fluid piping systems, the cause of these pressure waves is due simply to a change in velocity, for example, by closing a valve or starting a pump. Low pressure transients commonly occur at the discharge of a pump during a shutdown or unplanned pump trip. This same type of transient is initiated on the discharge side of a closing valve. It can also be a secondary event after a high pressure transient occurs. One of the main reasons transient pressure waves go undetected and therefore ignored at times is because they move at the speed of sound. It is quite common for the wave speed to exceed 4,000 feet per second. The speed of sound is dependent on the fluid medium in its container. The more rigid the fluid and piping system is, the higher the wave speed. The higher the wave speed, the larger the surge impact will be. In the case of low pressure transients, this means a higher wave speed will generate a lower drop in pressure. A transient wave's period, also known as the communication time, is essentially the time it takes the pressure wave to travel out and reflect back. When a wave reflects backwards, it can bring some relief to the initial pressure rise or drop. Generally, systems with longer wave periods tend to experience more significant surge spikes and dips. One reason for this is because the full extent of the velocity change is realized before the relieving wave returns. Quantifying the extent of a transient pressure rise or fall begins first with the Joukowsky equation. Note the greater the system's wave speed or the greater the change in velocity, the larger the surge impact will be. Also note the direction of pressure change is relative to the direction of the initial flow to the inducer. For example, in the case of a pump start, the fluid velocity increases, causing a low pressure transient at the inlet of the pump and a high pressure transient at the outlet of the pump. The opposite is true when the pump shuts down. The fluid velocity is decreased and causes a high pressure transient at the inlet of the pump and a low pressure transient at the outlet of the pump. The reason for caution when using the Joukowsky equation is that it is not always the worst case pressure circumstance. It can capture the initial pressure change, but computer surge simulation software becomes necessary once the transient pressure waves begin superimposing upon themselves or when other events occur such as line pack and cavitation. What is often overlooked is that it does not take that much of a change in velocity to send some fluids into a full vacuum state. In this example, water is flowing through a system at a velocity of 3 feet per second. The system's wave speed is 3,800 feet per second, and the steady state pump discharge pressure is 100 psi. The system experiences an unexpected pump trip, and the question is, 
what is the new immediate pressure at the discharge of the pump? The answer, assuming no surge protection and a long wave period, is the system is now in a full vacuum state. Even the slightest vacuum state can draw in contaminants into a system, especially if the pipe is buried. For some systems, that is a low concern, but for potable water systems, certain contaminants can be very harmful to the health of the community. One of these contaminants, Nigleria fowleri, has received a bit of notice in the recent years, mostly because of its nickname, brain-eating amoeba. While the total number of cases has been low over the last decade, most have been deadly, and the U.S. EPA periodically reviews whether this particular contaminant should be formally regulated. A second risk of unmitigated low-pressure transients is cavitation. Cavitation is a general term encompassing two effects. One, vapor formation, where liquids vaporize as the system pressure falls below the fluid's vapor pressure. Two, vapor cavity collapse with the returning pressure wave or flow reversal. A collapsed vapor pocket can be an extremely violent high pressure event, damaging the site of cavitation and propagating additional high pressure transient waves. This is absolutely one of the most common cases where high pressure is mistakenly blamed as the root cause. Cavitation can also occur in various locations within the system. In this example, a system is operating under a normal flow of nearly 9,000 gallons per minute and 50 psi pressure at the valve discharge. Computer modeling shows a quick valve closure, faster than the wave period, will initiate cavitation on both sides of the valve. On the downstream side of the valve, the flow with its momentum continues forward and a vapor pocket forms at the outlet of the valve. Eventually, the flow reverses and the vapor pocket collapses, causing the pressure to spike over 500 psi. On the upstream side, a high pressure transient is immediately initiated, causing the pressure to spike to over 1000 psi. As the flow oscillates back and forth, the same series of events that immediately occurred on the downstream side of the valve now occur on the upstream side of the valve and multiple bursts of pressure ensue until the energy is eventually dampened by friction. Pipe collapse is another notable risk associated with low pressure transients. A large diameter pipe under low pressure service can have a small wall thickness. Combining low pressure transients with external loading is a recipe for disaster, especially with older pipes. The damage and cost associated with a collapsed pipe can cost millions. Last fall, more than 80 homes were flooded with sewage as a result of a collapsed pipe. The pipe, which was supposed to have a lifespan of 100 years, only lasted 32 years. Worse, discerning the root cause proved a little challenging as Thanksgiving grease was first thought to be the culprit. So how are low pressure transients mitigated? First, they have to be properly identified. The two primary methods for predicting the transient risk of a system is computer search modeling and transient pressure monitoring. There are two primary mathematical methods for calculating surge pressures in a system, the method of characteristics and the wave plan method. Both approaches require more computational effort than we have time for, even in quarantine. Fortunately, in 2020, there exist various advanced computer software technologies that can more accurately and more timely crunch the numbers. In addition, the computer surge models enable identification of effective mitigation strategies which would be difficult, if not impossible, to analyze by other means. With this said, it is important to understand key assumptions and simplifications that even computer software calculations take into account. The two primary factors that attribute to some uncertainty in the calculations are constant wave speed and liquid-only flow. To some extent, there is always a degree of air entrainment within a fluid, which can lower the wave speed. When a system is experiencing cavitation, it is most certainly in two phases, liquid and gas. 
Accurately predicting over time a system's response to cavitation requires multi-phase flow models that are exponentially more complex. Fortunately, the onset of cavitation can be predicted very accurately using single-phase computer models and short-lived small vapor cavities can be considered a local phenomenon where modeling it in the liquid-only framework is still quite accurate. It is, however, common good practice to eliminate or minimize cavitation, meaning typical situations can still be predicted with high accuracy. Generally, while these assumptions neglect real effects, a substantial body of theoretical research as well as verification studies show that they are reasonable for the vast majority of engineering purposes. In this application, computer surge modeling was used to help protect a fuel terminal loading facility in the U.S. Gulf Coast region. This application entailed a 30-inch carbon steel line over 3,000 feet long designed to carry fuel from a plant to a shipping loading terminal. The routing was fairly simple but did include a 20-foot elevation change to clear a railroad. The pump selected for the project generated 25,000 gallons per minute of flow at a steady state velocity of 12 feet per second and a discharge pressure of 75 psi. A surge analysis was conducted to evaluate the transient risk of the system in the event of an unplanned pump trip. The model did in fact predict that the system would go into a full vacuum state with cavitation eminent upon flow reversal. Using computer modeling software, the engineers were able to size and place a surge vessel that would mitigate the low pressure transient. The second tool for predicting, or more so identifying, the transient risk of a system is transient pressure monitoring. Transient monitoring is essentially high-frequency pressure monitoring, where the pressure is measured multiple times a second. Transient monitors can detect and typically record pressures 20 to 500 times a second. Normal methods for pressure measurement range from dial gauges to SCADA systems where the pressure might be recorded at 1 hertz at best. Because transient pressure waves travel near the speed of sound, a record of pressures recorded at only 1 hertz or slower will convey bits and pieces of most transient events. The plot shown on this slide conveys this reality. The lower frequency data indicates a very moderate pressure envelope when in reality there are potentially severe problems that can only be revealed with more data points. In addition, many more pressure fluctuations were captured for the higher frequency data set. The minimum recommended frequency is dependent on the system's wave speed and communication time. Generally speaking, the higher the frequency, the more accurate and all-encompassing the data will be. Historically, the biggest challenge with higher frequency pressure detection devices has been data management. However, the technology continues to advance and in this day even includes cloud-based database capabilities. Let's move on to mitigation equipment, beginning first with air vacuum valves. When we discussed cavitation, the example here was shown and it was pointed out that on the downstream side of the valve, the system experiences a significant dip in pressure that eventually causes cavitation. One method for mitigating this dip in pressure would be to use an air vacuum and release valve that would open the system to atmosphere and draw into the line air that would allow the system to be equalized. For some systems, this is all the mitigation that is needed. However, there are a few challenges to be aware of when using air vacuum and release valves. The first challenge to be aware of is fluid compatibility. For example, drawing air into a highly combustible hydrocarbon application is extremely dangerous and another closed type surge mitigation device should be considered. The second challenge is pump efficiency, as the air in the line can add unwanted loads on the pump. Third, it's important to consider the time it takes for the air valve to open. Engineers who conduct surge analyses should always consider that items like air valves or check valves take some time to open or close. In the world of high-speed transient pressure waves, a tenth of a second matters. 
In addition, there are many applications where the air valves cannot be trusted to open due to the fluid media and general clogging. In cases like these, you might even see redundant air valves side by side. The last challenge to consider is a phenomenon called air slam. This occurs when the air valve is closing and the air is leaving the system too quickly, causing the air valve to slam shut when the fluid columns come back together. This action causes a secondary high pressure transient event, which is shown by the solid line in the plot to the right. One method of preventing this event is to select a multi-stage air valve that controls the air release via an orifice. For comparison, this is represented by the dashed line in the same plot. The second most common method for mitigating low pressure transients is through the use of a surge vessel. Surge vessels have advantages in that they allow the system to remain closed and can mitigate high pressure transients as well. Looking still at the cavitation example, but this time on the upstream side, you can see by the plot shown the surge vessel attenuates the high pressure transient wave then, as the flow reverses, the surge vessel sends fluid into the piping, preventing the system from going into a vacuum state. Low pressure transient events, when unmitigated, can lead to a multitude of problems. The abrupt and often extreme pressure fluctuations within a pipeline can further fatigue an already aged system. Sensitive systems are exposed to contaminants with negative pressures and pipe breaks. Unpredictable high pressures are generated with the collapse of vapor pockets that have formed with the low pressure transients. With the right tools and practices, such as transient monitoring and modeling, appropriate and effective solutions can be incorporated into the design of piping systems, adding years of design life and reducing safety risk and significantly reducing cost. Thank you for your time today.